Hello everyone and welcome back to another Star Wars figure review. Today we're taking a look at another addition to the Black Series 6 inch line and another addition to the storage saga of is it brown or is it blue. This is of course Han Solo in his Hoth gear and this is a figure that once again I'm really happy to have in the collection. Although given the fact that I gave you a look at Luke Skywalker in his Hoth gear in my last review of the two figures this is definitely the one that needed the upgrade the most and I'll touch base on why that is throughout this review. Now as you can see to your right hand side we have the archive release and on the left we have the original figure that was released back in 2014 which came alongside the Torn Torn. Now given the fact that I have the original release you may be wondering why I decided to pick up the archive version and the basic reason is because my original version is displayed in my collection on the Tauntaun and I wanted a Han Solo in his Hoth gear to stand alone in my Black Series display uh, as part of my Empire Strikes Back shelf. Now I do also have the other release of Han Solo in his Hoth gear that came as part of that convention exclusive display with Princess Leia in Echo Base but that figure obviously features his hood down and a variation of other differences but this particular figure I just wanted for the collection, um, it's another hole filled, um, but it's not a great figure if I'm being honest. Um, there are a number of issues with this one that I'm going to touch base on throughout this review. Visually it looks great, um, but in terms of practicality, in terms of the way it's been put together, it's not fantastic if I'm being honest. And with that in mind, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this figure. If you already have the original release so we'll touch base on that in just a little bit before we do as always let's take a look at the packaging this figure comes in so as you can see we do once again get the archive card back bubble combination going on here with this packaging really really nicely designed I love it um, as you can see at the top you've got the 50th anniversary of Lucasfilm logo which is really really nice looking forward to seeing what Hasbro churn out in celebration of that anniversary Obviously you've got the character's name down the side of the box and on the front we have an image of Han Solo in his Hoth gear. On the back you'll see that timeline of the Star Wars saga once again accompanied by the 50th anniversary logo. You've got an image of Han as well and a brief description of the character. So pretty standard stuff, nothing we haven't already seen. As I said I'm looking forward to seeing what Hasbro put out to celebrate 50 years of Lucasfilm. They've already announced that wave of Phantom Menace themed figures that are gonna come on the retro uh, Phantom Menace card backs that we used to see in the three and three quarter inch line back in the 90s. Hopefully that means we're gonna get some six inch scale Power of the Force 2 card backs plus uh, a number of other packaging variations from over the years. That's gonna be something that I'm uh, really looking forward to. But with packaging aside, let's jump into this review and take a look at the figure itself. So here he is, Han Solo in his Hoth gear. Once again, not a great figure, if I'm being brutally honest. Uh, I certainly think this figure is in dire need of a drastic upgrade when it comes to the engineering of the figure, at least. Um, the articulation in this one is substandard, in my opinion. Um, it doesn't really hold up by today's standards, um, the same way that the Luke Skywalker in his Hoth gear doesn't either. Um, but this one, as I said at the beginning of the review, just the way it's been put together just feels a little bit sloppy. Um, this figure has the same issues I had with the original release in the sense that the figure itself feels very gummy, very soft in terms of the plastic that's been used. Um, the one redeeming feature of this one as opposed to the original blue coat version is the fact that the jacket is much better painted. Now, again, I don't have a, a personal preference when it comes to the blue or brown jackets. Uh, but my one of my issues with the original release of this figure was that the jacket looked very plastic it was very shiny and it just looked like a toy whereas this one does a much better job of capturing the character as seen in the movie despite what you believe in terms of what color his jacket was um, like I said visually it's fine it looks really really nice you know it looks like Han Solo it includes everything that you'd expect to come with this version of Han Solo but just the overall execution is it leaves a lot to be desired as I said the plastic used is very soft and cheap uh, incredibly rubbery doesn't really meet the quality of the black series that we've come to expect over the years um, the face printing that comes with this one obviously it features the photo reel um, is better than the original release obviously you've got much more of a, 
a Harrison Ford likeness with this figure, which is great, and we'll look at that in a little bit more detail throughout this video. Um, but yeah, the articulation isn't fantastic, um, and just the overall quality of the figure feels below par for me personally. Um, in terms of accessories, he does come with the same ones that were included with the original release. You've got the macro binoculars that, as you can see, have a strap attached, so you can either hold those in his hand or have them wrapped around the neck. And then you do get the Han Solo DL44 blaster pistol as well, which is nicely sculpted. Great detail on that, as you can see. Get the camera to focus. And that can be stored in the holster on Han's belt. He also features a removable hood and removable goggles. And again, in terms of overall look, he's not too bad. Certainly uh, fits the bill of a Han Solo in Hoth gear. This was another issue that I didn't like about the original release as well, was the slit up the back of the hood. I know that that's been done for functionality in order to get the hood on and off, but it's a bit of an eyesore when you look at the back of the figure. Paint applications are fine. Um, nothing to write home about, there's no weathering or anything like that applied, which is a shame. Um, but they're reasonable, you know, they're nice and crisp, which is always a plus. You've got the rank badge on his jacket there, as you can see. In terms of articulation, we do get a very, very limited amount with this figure. He has a ball joint at the head, ball hinges at the shoulders that are very, very tight on my particular sample. Hinges at the elbows and swivels like Luke Skywalker at the forearm, which is a massive shame. I would have loved to have seen Hasbro maybe update that articulation on this figure uh, to include hinges at the wrists. That would have been really, really nice. But as I said, for the most part, it's a straight repaint. We have hinges or a ball joint, should I say, at the torso. We also have hinges at the hips and the lower portion of Han's jacket is made of a nice soft and flexible plastic so it doesn't hinder the articulation too much so if you want to swap out the original release and get this guy on your six inch black series tauntaun you can he also features swivels at the upper thigh a double joint in the knee again outdated articulation engineering as you've got the pins visible on the side of the leg and we also have a hinge and a rocker at the ankle so could be better in the articulation department again paint applications are reasonably spot on um, but with regards to certain aspects of the figure, certainly it could be better, and that lies within the head sculpt. So let's remove the hood and take a look at that head sculpt in a little bit more detail. So with the hood removed, you get a much better look at the head sculpt underneath, and while it's a decent head sculpt in its own right, the photoreal face printing technology certainly brings that out. Um, it does have this really weird, overly glossy look to it, which... I don't know why has been applied to a lot of recent Black Series 6 inch releases. Um, it doesn't look too bad at first glance and obviously the, the removable hood uh, does cover uh, a lot of the uh, sins with this one. Um, but it's just not great if I'm being honest. Um, like with Luke, the photo reel on this one feels a little bit almost blurry. It doesn't quite capture the detail. Now whether or not that's because the head sculpt wasn't that great to begin with. Um, but it just doesn't really capture the, the likeness and the overall essence of the character, in my opinion. Certainly could be better. Um, another issue that I have with regards to the head sculpt is the fact that it feels very, very small. Han feels like a pinhead as it pertains to this figure. Um, and not only that, but the rest of the figure itself just feels out of proportion. Um, the head is very, very small. And the figure overall is just way too tall. He absolutely towers over most other figures in your Black Series 6 inch collection. And I've got this one on display on my shelf and he's much closer in height to Darth Vader than he is to other characters of a similar height to Han. And it's just a little bit off-putting. Um, I really can't quite fathom out what Hasbro were thinking when they put this one together. Um, even in the initial stages back in 2014 when the Black Series was in its early days. Um, it's just a very, very weird choice in terms of overall design. Um, as you can see as well, he does come with removable goggles. These are a little bit naff as well. As you can see, the lenses are painted as opposed to being clear. 
as I mentioned in my last review with regards to these figures. We've seen some incredible Hoth themed figures released in the Black Series recently, particularly the Rebel Trooper. So I think, you know, this figure could have even borrowed the goggles from that figure and it would have looked a hell of a lot better. But yeah, not fantastic if I'm being honest. You know, there's reasonable detail there. Again, you can see the detail in the sculpt, but paint applications don't do this one too much justice if I'm being honest. As you can see, you can replace the hood if you so wish. It's a bit of a tight fit, to be honest. It's a little bit difficult to get it over the head and to get it look nice and natural, but, you know, it's decent. Ugh, I can't really say too many good things about this one because it just could have been so much better. Um, but it's not It's not terrible. It's, it's borderline adequate, in my opinion. Um, as I said, the main reason that I picked this one up was to display it in my collection as a standalone figure because I've got the original release on my Tauntaun. But now that I've picked it up, I wasn't really missing much, if I'm being honest. And in that respect, I'm not going to say I recommend this figure. Um, if you want a Hoth hand for your collection, if you haven't already got one, go ahead, pick it up. But if you have the original release or even if you have that version from the Echo Base Corridor exclusive set, stick with that one. Um, it is the same figure for the most part, but at least the head sculpt on that release is a little bit better than this one. So one more time, here he is alongside his original release. Obviously, the photoreal face printing technology on the uh, the newer version is, you know, light years ahead of the paint applications from the original. Um, but it just doesn't do a whole lot to really improve upon the first release. So in that respect. It kind of misses the mark for me, but I'm sure it'll tick the boxes for others. So if you're interested in picking this figure up for yourself, as always, there's a link down below in the video description where you can do so. And I'll be back with some more reviews on much better figures than this very, very soon. So until next time, as always, thank you for watching, keep collecting, and may the force be with you.